Justin, this is going to be a quick video on using Global Mapper to uh, create both the overlays and the raw Unity RAW file directly from Global Mapper. Uh, I sent you a zip file that contains two XML files, one called Bing 20XML and the other called Google 20XML. And we have to load those into Global Mapper so that uh, we can use those two sources for getting imagery. Uh, let's take a look at the Google XML and you notice how they every once in a while they change their version number. Well, same thing here. You'll have to reload the uh, base XML file, come down to the base URL and change that version number right there. Save it and then reload it into Global Mapper and you'll find that's very easy to do. So let's go ahead and load those two files into Global Mapper. Now you can access the uh, online sources either through the this main menu that displays or by clicking the globe in the toolbar. And uh, this is where we have to add those two sources. Now, you'll notice beneath the button there's add new source, remove source, delete cache files, and add source from file. First thing we want to do is add the sources from file. So we'll click on that, navigate to where we, you saved the files, and just load them. Now we've loaded Bing. We can do the same thing for Google. Now we've got two additional sources for uh, Global Mapper to go grab data from. Now eventually, like I said, Google, you'll have to come in and remove the source, change that file, and then re-add it using the uh, Add Source from File button. And you can also, after a while, use the Delete Cache files to delete the files that free up space on your uh, hard drive. <clears throat> now, to select the uh, imagery, the option you want to use is this one that says Within x number of miles of this address. So I normally use a value of about 1.5, sometimes 2. And then uh, once you get the address, you just paste it in this text area. And once you're ready, just click Connect. And it'll go out and pull in the imagery. Which I think it did. Oh yeah, there it is there. And while we're there, we can do the same thing for Bing. And you'll notice now we've got these two entries in the control area, Google and Bing. And those are our images. Now to create the selection area, instead of using the old digitize tool in the grid tool, we're now going to use the create rectangle square area feature. So click on that and you'll notice this warning message pops up telling you to press press and hold T and then shift in that order before you start dragging the mouse to create your selection area. So let me close that. I'll press T, shift, move to approximately the center of the area that I want to select. Click the mouse and drag it until it's drawn an area that encloses the course. Once you rele release the mouse button, now you'll see that it comes down here and it tells you the size of the area. So we've cr created an area that's 23, 73 meters by 2373. And I, I just use whatever I select here in the area. I don't try and go up to 2400 meters, etc. There's no need to do that. So click OK. Now you notice it's not selected, so you have to come over here and select it. Okay, now we've got the selected uh, area in that grid. Now we can go ahead and load the, the uh, LiDAR file. And uh, it's already at Spring Hill, so I'll select the four LiDAR files and open them up. Now in this window that pops up, you want to select only load 
points within bounds and it'll pop up to create the bounds and seeing that we've had the selection area limit it to the selected area and click OK and then click OK again and it'll load the LiDAR only within the selected area. Really nice. Makes a lot easier and quicker once you get it loaded. <coughs> we'll let this go ahead and load now. And once it loads, you're going to see the point cloud that's just within those uh, within the selected area. And then the next step is just like before, you're going to have to turn around and grid those, grid that area. But there's nothing new there for you. And now you see how it limited the LiDAR was limited to strictly with inside the selection area. So now what we need to do is grid that area. So we'll select those four. And a lot of times if you have quite a few tiles and the tiles aren't used within that area, you'll get a warning message telling you that no data was loaded from these, these tiles. So just to click OK and ignore it. So now we can grid this area. Go ahead and grid it. And this is a lot quicker almost every time because we've limited the gridding to just a very small subsection of the, the LiDAR that we downloaded. And now you have the, the uh, the gridded elevation, you can go ahead and delete these. I always delete these just to keep everything clean. Now, Shimmy taught me something new that this is optional. If you select the elevation values, right click on it, and select options at the top, you'll have this. Uh, another window that pops up and you can alter the elevation values and what he does he taught me to do was by changing these values and stuff you can get this ruler on the side to go from two or from zero all the way up to 65,535 which he says in unity makes it you enable you to find you have finer control over the height now you don't have to do this and I'm not going to do it because uh, sometimes it works for me and sometimes it doesn't but you'll notice down here in the middle we have the maximum value for us of 326.1 and the minimum of 287.4 I just round them up. I don't need to. Now you can click OK, and we have all the information we need now to to create the uh, overlays and the uh, raw file. So first, we'll do is just create one of the overlays. Now I've got Google selected, and it's just the same thing as you've done before. Go to Export, Export Raster, JPEG. Make sure you limit to the selection and then click OK and I'm going to save this in a, in a temporary whoops I gotta get the right one Spring Hill I'll just save this in a temporary or Sand Hill Google and click Save and this is the step where it's going to go out and pull in the high res li uh, light or overlay image imagery. Sometimes you'll get a message before you get this loading where it says it's going to download quite a few tiles. Do you want to proceed? 
just go ahead and click yes and it may take a little bit longer to download but other than that you'll get you'll get your final image <coughs> so this is going to take a little bit while take it looks like about five minutes to download that uh, imagery so let's just sit here and be patient And this is no different than the amount of times it took in SAS Planet to download all that data for the for the overlay. Except it was downloading a lot more data because we normally, of course, downloaded an area that was larger than what we really needed. Well, Google's running a little bit slow today. And of course, we do the same thing for Bing. We come up here and remove the check mark next to Google, select Bing, and go through and do the same save operation to get the two images. We're not going to go ahead and download the Bing image. Uh, it's no different than what we've already done. But we will create the, uh, the raw file. I think once you get used to doing it this way, you won't go back to the Wilbur and Photoshop and all the intermediate steps that we had to go through before. The only difference what's happening here, of course, is the download of the imagery instead of doing it beforehand we're doing it at the end and that's the reason it's taking a little bit longer at this step but overall it, it, it takes far less time to doing everything in Global Mapper I guess I should have made a smaller area Yeah, we're closing in on it. Okay, now that that's done, we can uh, go ahead and create the raw file. Select the elevation data and uh, the features. Do your exports like you've done before, elevation grid format. Except this time, you want to make sure you ch change it from the uh, what we were using to Unity Raw Terrain Texture. That's the option that you want to select. And you select OK. and for some reason, I always come over here and limit it to the selection area, but that's all I've got defined. So 
but I always do that anyhow. Click OK. Now we'll save that. Uh, whoops. The raw file and click on save. And actually what it's doing is creating the raw file and also an image of that gridded terrain which you can delete. So once we're done, this now we're now done in Global Mapper, you can go ahead and do the save workspace like you always do. But let's go out and take a look at these files that we've we've created. Uh, view by large icon. And you can see I got the overlay and it created this additional image which you can go ahead and delete. And we've got the raw file. <coughs> now what I do is I just use a program called Earthen View to do my resizing and stuff. So uh, you can use Photoshop or any other program you want to resize it and then rotate it 180 degrees. So I'll come up here and I'll resize it. 8192 by 8192, OK. And then in if you use Earthen View, it's really easy to do. I just press R twice and it rotates it 180 degrees. Now I can go ahead and save my file. And again, you can use Photoshop or whatever you want to. And now we're all set up to load these files into Unity. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I've already loaded the, the previous files in Unity to show you how to, to import the, uh, uh, the raw file. Now I've got them in here. I've got the two overlays. I've got the uh, raw file. And I've got the terrain and everything set up to resize it. So I'll click on here, change this to, say, 2400, just to round it off by 2400. And let me see, that's about 87, 90. That's about, I'll say, 50 feet, 50 meters. It's close enough for this test. Now, to import the raw, the only thing that's different is once you load the file you now select Mac select Mac do your import well I screwed up <laughs> 2400 that's okay and of course then you can add the overlay you do it a different way than I do but that's okay this is not going to match 100%, but it'll be close enough. And you're done. You've got your, you've got your uh, train and your overlay and everything's in place just like it was before. That's how easy it is to do using Global Mapper. And uh, again, if you have any questions, we'll go through this maybe through a session, do one just to, to show you how to do everything. But uh, that's it for now. I'll post this video and send you the zip file with the uh, two XML files that you're going to need. Later.